Great to be back with you, Molly. My favorite question to ask people, at least one of them for sure. I find influencers come different sizes, different shapes, different cultures, different languages, different moments in time, multiple moments, or sometimes even right moment, right time, everything. Who or more than one has been an influencer in your life? Yeah, so I have multiple. I guess uh, when I first saw this question, I, the, the folks that came to mind were actually my two PhD advisors which is super nerdy and academic, I suppose. <laughs> but I, I know I wouldn't be who I was today without that sort of training. I had, I had two advisors. Um, my main one was Sarah Billington. She's a professor, they're both professors at Stanford. She's in the more structure side. And then the other one is Craig Quiddle on the environmental side, also in civil and environmental engineering at Stanford. And the reason I mention that is because I was an atypical PhD student. A lot of people go in wanting to be professors and not only that if you have a young PI if you have a young advisor like they're often sort of judged and graded on the success of their students so if you after you graduate with your PhD if you become a faculty member yourself and how much you publish like all that kind of goes into the clout that your advisor has and neither of my advisors although I'm sure they felt that pressure never put that pressure on me that was never my dream or my goal. Um, and yes, there was definitely like pressure on me to be the best technical person in your specific area that you can possibly be. That is what will give you power and options in life. But like there was definitely that sort of message. And not only that, there was some overcurrent of you're a technical person, you do technical stuff, you leave business to business people. And I may have not completely followed that advice, but um you know, they've been completely supportive the whole way I got my PhD a long time ago. We're still in contact. It's still in contact now. And they're some of my biggest cheerleaders. So those were the first two that came up when I answered that question. Uh, or when I saw that question, I guess on the flip side of that, just when we were talking before this began, I was thinking about my kids and my parenting style. Um, my parents, I think, were really, and I pro probably this is a quote, the answer you get all the time, but my parents were really unique in, in a lot of ways. I think I'm, my husband and I were atypical parents, but I think my parents were also fairly atypical. Um, my dad completely always believed and believes you learn through failure. Like he's not one to ever help on anything. He would never help us with our homework to the point that my husband's kind of like, <laughs> your parents were like kind of neglectful. Um, you know, I, I, and I was, I mean, maybe they saw that in me. I was always like completely obsessive. Like I would, um, my, my, parents wouldn't read me my spelling words and I was really bad at spelling and I wanted to always get a perfect score on my spelling. So I used to like read it into my dad's tape recorder machine on his answering machine and like play back the spelling words. Um, but you know, I never had that kind of, I never had academic pressure from my parents. I, I think if I hadn't wanted to, if I definitely did not want to go to college, my parents would have never pushed me like that. Like that's very not normal. And like my dad's still alive and he's still, you know, his biggest concern is like, I'm worried you're going to be a billionaire. You're going to have to find somewhat, some, something to do with all your money. You know, you need to start planning what you're going to do with all your money when you're a billionaire. And I'm like, Dad, I, I got a little while. I'm so glad you blindly believe in me. But, um, you know, like I know so many other people have different relationships with their parents, which like in good and bad, but like, you know, I, I think I'm kind of, you know, I, I dance to my own music because that's the kind of family I grew up in. So I guess... I'll answer also this question with the cliche answer of my family. No, hey, listen, if our parents, one way or another, it's kind of like one way or another you'll brand yourself, one way or another yeah. your parents are gonna have an effect on you. But he, he probably knew that what he was doing was working. If he saw that it was, for lack of a better word, breaking you, he probably would have changed something or whatever. Maybe like my dad's goal in life, I think from the time he was a teenager was like, to never be an employee. He never wanted to be an employee. He never went to work for the man. Like that was definitely his thing. Like he, he was kind of a, he is still kind of like an ex hippie type. Mm -hmm. And um, me and my siblings, we all grew up and were, you know, um, me and my brother are both engineers and both, both me and my brother have like at least master's degrees in engineering. My dad's just kind of like, how did this happen? <laughs> like, um, and yeah, like I have employees and my dad's like, oh God, now like, I guess, I, does that make me the man now? I don't know, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's, 
No, that's very cool. <laughs> um, cool. That hey, parents are, grandparents are, but I'm glad you also mentioned those those two other individuals. And uh, I do find that sometimes it's a long period of of influence, and sometimes someone says something like I said, right time, right place, that just sticks. So I, I think about that a lot because you, I hear all these stories. Like my aunt's a fifth grade teacher, and she's had people come back years and years later who've been like when I was in fifth grade and I was doing like, I, you know, I, I struggled and you, you were the one who said like, who, who just said some little offhanded comment that stuck with that person for years later, that they, that they could do it, that they were good at it. So it's something, oh God, I, bl I mean, I'm blabbering on right now. I blabber, you know, at my all hands on deck, I blabber to my team and I'm like, God, I gotta be careful what I say. Because people, you never know how you're going to influence people. Right. Look at uh, Mr. Holland's opus. Yes. Yeah, I haven't seen that movie in a long time. I know. You just reminded me of it. Because um, you never know what, where you're going to make an impact. So you, yeah. we should actually all be thinking about it because we do make an impact. Yep. So thank you. Oh, great. Thanks.